In this video, I'll run through how combat works in the One Ring 2nd Edition. At the end of this video, I'll also cover how to read adversary stat blocks in full. We'll start with a basic scenario, where there are three heroes and three orcs fighting in a fairly open space. During combat, heroes can perform one main action, typically this is making an attack, and a secondary action, which could be drawing a weapon or removing a piece of war gear, etc. The first thing to do is determine if any side is surprised. If the enemies are trying to ambush the heroes, all player characters must make an awareness roll. Any player who fails their roll won't be able to make an attack during the opening volley or the first round of close quarters combat. If players are trying to ambush the enemy, the heroes all make stealth rolls. If any player fails this roll, the enemy cannot be surprised. As long as the heroes aren't surprised, they always go first in combat, in the order of their stances, which we'll get to, starting with the most forward stance, moving backwards. If neither side is surprised, then combat starts with the opening volley, as long as there is enough space between the opposing forces where this would make sense. Any characters, heroes or villains, that have a bow or thrown weapon can make one or more ranged attacks depending on the space between their adversaries. Any character using a shield here can double its parry modifier. Heroes go first, so we'll start with Ingold the Ranger. All the heroes currently have two diamonds filled in for proficiency with their bows. Ingold will make an attack against one of the orc soldiers by rolling one feet die plus two success die. Since attacks are made with strength, he is hoping to roll equal to or higher than his strength TN, plus the parry score of his enemy of plus one for a total TN of twelve. Ingold rolls poorly and only gets an 8, missing the orc. Elahir, the elf, loses a shot next. He targets the same orc soldier. However, his TN will be 14, his strength TN of 13 plus the orc's parry modifier of 1. Elahir just makes the TN. A bow's damage rating is 3, so the orc's endurance drops from 12 to 9. Faster, the hobbit will attack next. He will aim for the goblin archer. With a lucky roll, he gets a 19, beating the TN of 14. In addition, Faster rolled a 10 on his feet die, which might cause a piercing blow. The Goblin Archer will lose 3 points of endurance, and also have to make a protection roll to avoid the piercing blow. The Goblin will roll 1 feet die, plus the number of 6's indicated by his armor rating, in this case a 1. The TN to equal or beat is the injury rating of the weapon dealing the blow, which is a 14. The Goblin rolls a 13, his armor will not protect him. Since the Goblin has a might of 1, he can only take 1 wound, and is killed by Fastred's arrow. Now that all our heroes have gone, it's the enemy's turn. However, their archer has already been killed, so there are only 2 left. The orc soldiers each have spears, and choose to throw them at Elahir and Fastred. The TN that the orcs are trying to equal or beat is the parry score of the heroes, which are 19 and 18 respectively. Elahir would normally double his shield bonus, however, since he just used his bow, he has not had time to equip it. The first shot at Fastred scores a 7, far too low. The second, aimed at Elahir, rolls an eye of Sauron. When an enemy rolls an eye, the attack hits, regardless of the other numbers, and also potentially deals a piercing blow. This works the same as if a hero rolled a G rune. Elahir loses 3 points of endurance from the spear, and must roll to avoid the piercing blow. The injury rating of the spear is 14. Since he is wearing a leather corslet, Elahir can roll 2 d6s in addition to the 1 feet die. His roll of 7 is not enough, and Elahir takes a wound. He must now roll on the wound severity table from page 101 to see how deadly it is. Rolling a 6 on a feet die means the injury is severe and will take 6 days to heal. If Elahir takes another wound, he will fall unconscious and be out of the battle. Now that all sides have made their opening volley, it is time to move into close quarters. All heroes can choose a stance at the start of each round. The stances are forward, open, defensive, and rearward, and each one offers a different advantage, disadvantage, and combat task that you can perform instead of attacking. Enemies are not given stances. Each hero is paired with one or more opponent. In this scenario, there are now less enemies than heroes. Ingold and Elahir will face off against one orc soldier each. Fastrid will stay back and can make ranged attacks, and he can choose either remaining orc as a target. Ingold chooses the forward stance, Elahir defensive, and Fastred must be in rearward since he is using a ranged weapon. Being the most forward, Ingold will go first, using his sword, and his forward stance gives him an extra d6 to roll. His TN remains a 12, and he rolls a 5, a 6, a 4, and a 3, for a total of 18. His attack forces the orc to lose 5 endurance, bringing him down from a 9 to a 4. In addition, Ingold can spend his 6 to deal special damage. In this case, we'll use the Heavy Blow option, which deals an extra endurance loss equal to the attacker's strength rating, which is 7, plus 1 because Ingold was using both hands and the sword. That is more than enough to reduce this orc soldier to 0 endurance, killing him. Elahir will go next. Since he is in the defensive stance, his attack will lose 1d6. He rolls an eye and a 6. When heroes roll an eye, it counts as 0, therefore his attack does not succeed. Fastred will make a ranged attack, just succeeding with a 15 and causing an endurance loss of 3. The final orc will now attack. Since he is attacking Elahir, who is in a defensive stance, the orc loses 1d6 and does not succeed on the attack. A new combat round starts. Players can choose a new combat stance if they wish. For this battle, everyone will stay as they are. Instead of attacking, Ingold will perform his combat task, which is to try and intimidate his foe by making an awe roll. He rolls a 9 and a 5, which beats his strength TN of 11. Since the orc soldier only has a might of 1, it will become weary. 
This means that any 1s, 2s, or 3s that it rolls on its success die will count as 0 for its next attack. Elahir is up and makes a quick stab with his spear. He still can only roll 1d6 plus his feet die, but the result is a Gandalf rune and a 4. The Gandalf rune means that the hit succeeds, regardless of the other numbers rolled, and might deal a piercing blow. The orc loses 4 more points of endurance, bringing him down to 5. The orc must make a protection roll now, looking to equal or beat a 14, which is the injury rating of the spear being used with only one hand. The orc has an armor rating of 2, so he'll roll 1 feet die plus 2d6. He rolls a Gandalf rune, a 5, and a 1. When enemies roll a Gandalf rune, it counts as 0. The protection roll fails and the final enemy dies in the battlefield. Our heroes are victorious. That is about as basic a combat encounter as you are likely to see. Now I'll we'll go over some other rules that might come up. In the scenario above, one of the orcs became weary, meaning that any 1s, 2s, or 3s that are rolled on attack success die count as 0. Player heroes can become weary too. This happens if their endurance score is lowered so much that it equals or is less than their load score. You can cast off helms, shields, or extra weapons to lower your load score, and thus keep from becoming weary. If a character becomes wounded and you want to reduce the severity of their injury, uh, any heroes who are not unconscious can take their action to perform a healing roll. A successful roll reduces the recovery time of a wound by one day plus an additional day for every success icon to a minimum of one day. Also, each hero can only try one healing roll per wound per day. Heroes and enemies can also gain advantages or remove complications based on a variety of circumstances by making a battle roll as their main action as shown on the table on page 102. If the roll is successful, the advantage or complication remains for the next round. If one or more success icons are rolled, the advantage or complication remains for the rest of the battle. Another option that heroes have available to them is to reduce the damage from one attack per round. A player can choose to get knocked back by an enemy blow. This halves the damage dealt, rounded up. However, they must spend their main action next turn recovering their position. In the combat scenario earlier, you saw Ingold roll a 6 and get to do special damage on one of his attacks. Enemies can also perform special damage on 6s. These include Break Shield, Heavy Blow, Pierce, and Seize. Final note on combat. If there are more characters, heroes or adversaries, on one side of a fight than the other, multiple characters can attack the same opponent in close quarters. Generally, only three characters can attack the same opponent in close quarters combat if the opponent is human-sized. Up to six characters could fight something larger, such as a troll. That is it for combat. I will now cover how to read an adversary stat block using the Orc Chieftain block. Under the adversary name, there are two distinctive features. These are similar to the distinctive features on the player character sheets and are a reminder of how to roleplay them. Next is the attribute level. This is a general score to denote how much of a challenge each adversary is. As well, it's a rating that is applied to several mechanics, such as special damage opportunities. Endurance is the same as it is for players. This number will be reduced when players make successful attacks. Once the adversary's endurance is reduced to zero, they are killed. An adversary's might indicates how many attacks they can make on their turn, as well as how many wounds it takes to eliminate them. An adversary that can make multiple attacks can target the same opponent or different ones within range. Each adversary will have a hate or resolve score. Fully evil creatures are fueled by hate, while adversaries that are not fully evil have resolve. Heroes who kill enemies with resolve may be considered to have done a misdeed by the lore master and gain shadow. An adversary can spend hate or resolve points to trigger fell abilities or to gain 1d6 on an attack roll or protection roll. If an adversary starts its turn with zero hate or resolve, it becomes weary. Next on the stat block, we'll cover the parry score. This number is added to the strength TN of a player hero attacking the adversary. The armor rating shows how many d6s a particular adversary can use when making protection rolls. Moving on to the adversary combat proficiencies, the first number after the weapon type is how many d6s they roll when attacking with that weapon. Next is the damage dealt on a successful attack, and then finally, the injury rating of the weapon used. The final thing you will find on adversary stat blocks are the fell abilities they possess. Some are negative aspects, like this goblin archer's craven feature, some might be automatically triggered, like this orc poison feature, while still others require a point of hate or resolve to be spent to activate, like the orc chieftain's great leap. Some adversaries can cause heroes to gain shadow points, either through dread or sorcery. Players can reduce or avoid this by performing a shadow test, by using their rating in either wisdom for dread or valor for sorcery. Finally, most adversaries have extra fell abilities that aren't written on their stat block. These will be included in the overall description for each adversary category. For example, all orcs have the hate sunlight feature. That is everything you need to know to run combat in the One Ring 2nd Edition. Thanks for watching!